Uh, first of all, uh, welcome, Dave. Once again, the Razorbacks 43 and 19 on the year. Winners of the Stillwater and Chapel Hill uh, Regional and Super Regional. Dave in his 20th season. God, is that real? 20th season at Arkansas? And your 29th in your career. We'll start with a statement from you, and then we'll have questions for the student athletes. Dave? Yeah, just obviously just great to be back. Um, this place, I've said it 20 times in the last week. It never gets old. Uh, it's, it's hard to get here. It's special. Um, this, these guys right here and their teammates, they, they did a great job the last couple of weekends of playing about as hard as I can, I've seen them play all year. And uh, I went into a couple of difficult places and came away victorious. And, you know, now we get, get to be up here. It's, uh, it's great. Okay, once we'll open it up now for questions for the student athletes only. Uh, if, if you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you and give us your name and affiliation. We'll start here with, with Tom. Hey there, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, Connor, you guys play Stanford. I'm assuming that you're going to be the starter in game one. What do you know about their lineup? Uh, does it, is it a benefit that you've played them before? I think so. We obviously played them earlier in the year, and Hagen Smith threw that game. So I got to sit back and watch, uh, kind of just take everything in. So I kind of got a sneak peek at their lineup and uh, have a good idea of what they do. And well, what is that? What do they do? They swing it well. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody's seen that the past couple of weeks. Uh, they're a good team, solid from one to nine, and uh, well-rounded throughout that lineup. So it's a good challenge for us. OK, over here. Hey guys, uh, this is for Connor, Courtney Mims from Pick Trail Nation. You know, Alex Williams from Stanford made a comment in the press conference, you know, that's going a little bit crazy on social media that, you know, they, he thinks their offense is better than yours. You know, I saw you like a few tweets to that. What, what, how do you feel about that statement? I think you can say whatever you want. I mean, I think everybody should be confident in themselves. And uh, I got the same confidence with my guys, my, the batters and our fielders. So uh, I guess we'll find out. Okay. Who you got? Okay, here. Mark Garland, CWS247. Uh, this is for Michael and Caden. You guys know you're facing Alex Williams tomorrow, getting after that, and then they got a great bullpen. Is this like one pitch at a time approach? How are we attacking that kind of pitching that you guys are going to see? Yeah, one pitch at a time. I mean, we know the challenge that we, uh, we got into, and uh, we're just excited to be here. And coach has been saying it for a while now. It's just about us. So we're focused on us and putting together a strong game. Caden. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, just like he says, one pitch at a time, and we're not we're not looking past anything else. You know, we're just focused on the first game and just going to go out there and do our thing. Okay, Howard. Uh, Howard Borden, Omaha KOBM. Uh, Dave, congratulations, Coach. Good to see you. Uh, for Connor, uh, Michael, and Caden, um, looking back from fall ball to sitting up here on the dais right now, uh, what have you learned about your team? your teammates, uh, the style of Arkansas baseball for this, for this spring into summer and, and reflect on the growth and the challenges that you had. And congratulations for being here and best of luck. Connor, you start. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I knew we were tough the whole year. It's just sometimes you have to wait for an opportunity to prove it. And I think that the last two weeks have given us an opportunity to prove it. And I've seen it, uh, you know, here and there again. But it's uh, really staying true this past two weeks, three weeks. and teams really come together and uh, playing a brand of baseball that Arkansas should be proud of. Michael? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, we were saying all fall how good we thought this team was going to be, and I think we're, uh, we're starting to live up to that expectation a little bit. I think these uh, past two or three weeks have been uh, a good clicking time period for the team. I feel like we're, uh, we're starting to click on all cylinders, and it's a good time to do that. Caden? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with both of what they said, and you know, ever since we stepped back on campus last fall, and you know, we just we knew something was special with this team, and you know, uh, it just kind of like it all, this season went by very fast, and you know, we just kind of proved them how tough we are, and we've worked really hard for, you know, to be that tough, and you know, we've got really good guys in this team that will go to war for any of us, and um, got a really good fan base and coaching staff, and you know, it's just it's, it's time since we're here. Joe Menzer, uh, ESPN, SEC Network. Could you guys just talk about uh, 
the gauntlet of running through the SEC and how that's prepared you for this, and also just the fact that there are half the field is SEC teams? I think that speaks volumes to it. I mean, there's four teams here from the SEC. Um, you know, the West is loaded. Every week you have to bring it. So I think we've – obviously we've played a lot of these teams before and um, you know, it really gets you ready to, to jump into this kind of tournament to where you might face those teams again. So I think we're ready and uh, have a good sneak peek of what we're going to have to do. Michael? Yeah, I agree. Uh, the SEC is a very special league. Um, I'm glad I got to be a part of it for my last year. So uh, we got to experience some great competition all year, and I think it uh, definitely prepared us for what we're about to see here. Okay. Uh, coming in last year out of, out of high school, I knew that SEC was a special league, and it just kind of proved itself uh, the past two years, you know, uh, showing that there's four teams in it this year, and, you know, we've played them, obviously, and, um, you know, we're just excited to go out there, and we've got to bring our best every day and just focus one game at a time. Okay. Jordan McAlpin at the Omaha World Herald. For all three of you guys, how much of a motivation did the way last season ends serve for the group, and then what's it mean to be back on this stage? I think it meant a lot to get back to this. I mean, obviously, we all had the downfall last year that happened, and we were all sad about it. But it really motivated us this year, and we worked for it. And, uh, you know, I think Coach talked about it all year. You know, we got to do it for those guys that last year maybe didn't get the opportunity. And we had a lot of guys up here that haven't been to Omaha before, uh, transfer guys, uh, some guys that have been there two years. So uh, to have that happen for them, I'm really excited for them. And um, I think we got a lot to prove still. Michael? Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> just, just about every other question. Um, we can start the other one next time. Yeah, so I uh, would have never thought I'd be here three years ago, so I'm just grateful to be here. But uh, watching the other teams when we were celebrating on their field, uh, you can just see the heartbreak, and I'm sure they went through the same thing last year. So glad we were on the other end of that. But, uh, yeah, just grateful to be here. It's hard to get here. Okay. Yeah, so last year we obviously got to watch – North Carolina State dog pile in our field, and you know we just kind of took into heart, and you know you gotta you gotta forget about it at some point. So I mean, you know we just got to get back out there like we did this year, and just worked, and we knew that we wanted to be the one dog filing this year, and um, not just to get here either. We wanted to be, you know, set ourselves up for the chance to win it. So I mean, that's just what we're focusing on now, and you know, we use that motivation. Back over here. Joe Healy with Baseball America. Um, this is for Michael. You alluded to it a, a moment ago coming in as a transfer to this group that had been together. So what was that acclimation process for you like to become, you know, feel like you were fully a part of this program? And then what does it mean to you to have been such a big part of the puzzle to get this team here? Oh, uh, it was nice. Uh, I came in in the fall. Uh, I was kind of a late deal where when I committed here, I just kind of hurried up and got a place to stay. But uh, they welcomed me with open arms from the team to the nutritionist to everyone. Um, it was a super easy transition for me. And uh, yeah, it's just special to be a part of a team like this. Uh, it's my last year of college baseball, so I'm more than happy to go out uh, at Omaha for sure. Okay, Tom. If I could go in this order this time, uh, Caden. <laughs> Uh, the standard that Davis set here with this program, I, I think maybe you guys expect to, to get to Omaha on a year-to-year -year basis. How did that play into your recruitment? I know you're an in-state kid. And if y'all could all kind of maybe – in the reason why you came to be able to play on this stage, and Connor, you've already been here, but just, you know, the standard that Davis put up for this program. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we don't talk about it that much about coming here. It's just an, expe an expectation. And, um, you know, being recruited here, you just know that this is the goal. Like – you have a chance to come here every year. Like, that's just kind of like what you, when you step on campus, like, you know, that's what you're going to do. And um, Coach Van Horn has done an unbelievable job at taking almost every group to College World Series. And it's, it's definitely just something like when you, when you step on campus, you know it's going to happen. And you got to work for it and earn it. And teams got to be tough. But, you know, that's just the kind of teams that he produces. Michael. Yeah. Um, Coach Van Horn is, uh, a really special guy, and if you know college baseball, uh, you know Arkansas is going to be right there at the end of the postseason every year, making a run at the College World Series. And a lot of credit to him and our coaching staff. Um, when I came in, like he said, I, we didn't talk about it much. It was just kind of expected, and I think that's a good standard to have. Uh, don't talk about it, be about it. Um, kind of lived by that my whole life, so I think it, uh, it was a good fit. Connor, yeah, I completely agree. Um, 
I think the standard is the same every day. You walk in the door, everybody knows what it is. You don't have to really talk about it, and that's what we do. Um, you know, we might have a new building there at the facility, but uh, I think we're still a blue collar group that gets in there every day and works. So uh, that's the thing that Coach Van Horn has set down, and I think we've followed it well. Okay, we'll have time for one more question for the student athletes. Okay, Tom. Quick. You guys have been on the road for the last since the Alabama series, um, and I think maybe a certain bonding comes out of that. How much has that played into you you being here right now, bonding on the road? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've always enjoyed playing on the road. Um, it's just something like you know, we kind of set last year is that we like to play on the road and, you know, we're tough on the road. And, um, you know, it's just definitely bonding time. We get to spend a lot of time on buses and, you know, going to eat together and practicing together and working out together on the road. And it's just – it's definitely something special that – I mean, you get it at home too, but you really get it on the road. So I feel like that's, that's definitely something that's kind of brought our chemistry together towards the end of the year too. Yeah, I think uh, camaraderie and chemistry is big, um, especially when you get towards the end of the season. Uh, we mentioned it before, but we're all just playing for each other right now. Um, we've been saying it for a while that it's all about us. And yeah, we're just focused on the task ahead for sure. I think the same thing. You get to learn a lot about the, the guys. Get cold, you know, I mean, you get closer to everybody, and uh, you kind of learn their backstory more. So as you get deeper in the season, everybody's gelling together really well. and. Uh, we went and watched that new Top Gun movie, so I think that really got us motivated to play uh, on a big stage and really got our minds right. Okay, guys, uh, we'll let y'all go. And a reminder that locker rooms are closed to all media at all times. And if you please work with the Team SID, and Oliver's back here. There he is. I got the right name this time. And uh, he'll help you out in the additional requests. And, uh, guys, you three are excused. Thank you. Let them clear out, and then we'll start questions for you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Where's Trainer? He's not here. Kevin, you see him back here? He's here. He's our. He's, he's around. He's your. He's our. Yeah, he's board administrator. Yeah. He's here. Okay, questions for Coach Van Horn, and we'll start right here. Andrew Ellis, hogsports.com. Coach, you've had a lot of guys in this tournament alone just adjust to new roles, kind of switching spots in the lineup, closing games, starting games. Just what have you thought of the way your team's been able to adjust to different roles on the fly? Well, we, we needed to make some adjustments. You know, we struggled down the stretch on the mound a little bit uh, with uh, – you know, we've given up big innings, and big innings usually happen when you walk people. Um, it pitch behind in the count. And that's what happened a lot. And so we, we we changed up a little bit where we didn't announce our three starters. We get, we'd give you Friday starter, and we'd just see who we, who we had left. We told the staff, pitching staff, that uh, all hands on deck. Don't think you're starting tomorrow. You may be pitching today. And, uh you know, it seemed to work a little bit. And then we just – we've had a few guys step up for us and – you know, position player-wise, it's pretty much the same guys, but it really changed the lineup going into the regional. Just took Wallace out of the leadoff spot, put him three hole, put Webb in the, took him out of the middle lineup, put him up top, and a few others, a few other adjustments there, and it, it worked. Okay, back here. Jacob Timmy, Mavradio.fm. Um, the guys had kind of alluded to it earlier, but you guys were the top-seeded team last year. Um, and though that this team doesn't have the Christian Franklins, the Kevin Copps, and the um, Patrick Wicklanders, uh, what testament does that show to your team that um, you're able to get back to the College World Series and still find that winning formula um, this season? Yeah, those are those are three really good players. You know, Kevin was was unbelievable. I mean, he ended up winning the Golden Spikes Award really from out of nowhere, and he ended up. I mean, he he spoiled us, and uh, so. We, you don't replace that guy. And, uh, you know, Christian was an incredible center fielder, played with a lot of fire. He played at the end of the season. He was sick and fought through it a little bit. And, and, and Wicklander was a guy that we didn't even start at the beginning of the year. We didn't know how to use him. We threw him out there when we were getting crushed in game one of our uh, first conference series against Alabama. We got beat 16 to 1, first game in the SEC in 2021. We threw him out there and he settled it down. We were down 10 nothing after two. 
and we put him out there. He did a great job about the fourth, fifth inning. So we started him the next weekend against Mississippi State on Friday, and he beat him. He never went off Friday night, made it all conference. That's baseball. Crazy things happen. You just got to give guys an opportunity. So losing those three guys, we lost three guys that were really tough and really team-oriented, and uh, – We've had a lot of guys kind of step it up, and, and it's, it has been able – you can't replace Kevin Copps with one pitcher. Three or four guys got to take his job because that's what he did. He did it all, closed, long relief, started at the end. Uh, you know, outfielders have been – outfield's been solid. Um, I don't know. I just feel like that we came together as a team, played really well. You know, we, we had a good team all year, but we weren't, we weren't lights out. We didn't get whipped by very much. We didn't get beat by very many runs. We didn't beat you by very many. We just won enough, and we got a little tired at the end of in May. Our arms got tired, and uh, we lost some games down the stretch. But I just think the team had a burning desire to win. And after a lot of conversations and talks, really the last few weeks, I think I think some guys they 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 came to realize that you know this may be their last last shot to play with this group. And man, they have pulled together. Okay, Jordan. Jordan McAlpin at the Omaha World Herald. Dave, obviously you're no stranger to this stage. Personally, what's it mean to be back, but also with this group? What's special about them that they've been able to overcome everything this season? Well, it's it's really special to be back here, uh, especially the way it ended last year. It really had a perfect season going. It was unbelievable. Uh, won everything that was put in front of us, won every series on the weekend. Um, and then to lose those last two games by one run both days, you know, it was tough. So it made this year, it just, it was special because of kind of the hurt from last year, honestly. Um, this group is, is just, is special because they didn't want to be known as the team after the team that didn't do a whole lot and faded at the end of the year. Um, I, I don't know, just a lot of different personalities that came together. And, you know, when we got back from that trip from Alabama, we were gone for two weeks. A lot of times a coach can look at a team and look at the way they walk around and body language, and you're going, well, we're in trouble. And we didn't let that happen. They didn't let it happen. And to me, that makes them special. Okay. Uh, right here, Travis. Travis Brown at the Bryan College Station Eagle. Uh, Coach, I believe y'all were one of the teams in contention at the end for, for Jack Moss. What, what was it about his game that you know, that attracted y'all to, to him? You know, we knew he was a good hitter. Honestly, didn't know he was as good as he is. I don't think Jim knew he was as good as he is. I mean, he's he's a professional type hitter. He swings at strikes. He fouls off borderline pitches. He uses the whole field. He can, he's got some pull power. He can go the other way. I mean, he's just a really good hitter. And uh, – Hats off to him for being a student of the game and working. And uh, yeah, uh, that was a bummer when we didn't get him. Can we have a question from the Zoom? Steve, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Coach, you mentioned your team's uh, you know all hands on deck pitching approach. Stanford certainly has used that the past two weekends. I'm going to assume that uh, Coach Esker probably will do so again in Omaha, how does that change, if any, your offensive philosophy, particularly early in the game? Yeah, it's it's not going to change us what we do. I mean, it's uh, I mean, if if you're worried about who they bring out of the bullpen, probably not doing very well. We just have to do what we do, and hopefully, we'll have good at bats, facing a really good pitcher, uh, nine and one record, something like that. So he knows how to win. Team plays good behind him. We know all about their bullpen, the lefties and power arms that they have. So, uh, you know, at this time of the year, anything can happen. You just got to have good at bats, try to take good swings, and hopefully good things happen. Okay, right here for Bob Holt's replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so based on your earlier comments, I'm assuming you're not going to announce any starters beyond Connor. Connor. Connor will definitely be our starter on Saturday. Is it a is it a good problem that that Zach Morris has just recently started? Zach Morris has recently started, and that Hagen's closed, and and like you can mix and match. Is that is that a good thing? And oh, you like it? Yeah, we love it. It's a great thing. There's there's no problem there. And all those guys, they just want to pitch, and it, they don't care if they start or not. I mean, honestly, we didn't know who we were going to throw in game two in, in North Carolina until the morning of the game, and we we changed our mind twice the night before, and. 
you know, we were going to go left, and then we thought, well, let's just go right, and we went back to left, and finally he said, no, nah, let's, let's go with the guy that that's, we've given it to him a little bit more and given him the ball a little more. So uh, having the different arm, different looks, uh, you know, out of the pen, and they can go long, you know, if we need to bring somebody in the fourth, he might be able to finish the game. So it's, it's, it's all good. Seven appearances here in 19 years, it just kind of speaks for itself. How much is winning this thing maybe still drive you that, well, to win it? I don't, I don't think it, that's what drives me. I mean, shoot, yeah, I want to win it. So does everybody that's, gonna, that's sat up here today. And whether they've won it two times or never, uh, you want to win it uh, for, for the fan base. You want to win it for the former players, former coach, coaches. Uh, you know, uh, you'd love to see your, your team dogpile on the field. Um, I think that I don't want the players to feel like, you know, it's a failure if you don't win it. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how tough it is to get here. I've lived it many a time. I've been on the other end of it, the heartbreak, maybe three times. Um, and that, that's, that's what's hard to swallow. But, uh, I mean, winning it would be great. I want to win it. Been wanting to win it since I started coaching. Who who wouldn't? Why you get in you get in it to to win that last game of the year? Maybe when you start out, but the longer you coach, the more you you just appreciate the players, and and that's kind of where I'm at now. We'll go back to the Zoom here. <clears throat> All right, let's go to Andrew. Andrew, please state your name and affiliation for us. Yeah, it's Andrew Hutchinson with hogbeat.com. Coach, you mentioned all the, the the roles evolving on your pitching staff and changing up your order. Is it a little unique that it's it's happened so late in the season or have have is this kind of something you've done in your in your past? No, I don't think I've really done this before. I mean, you guys you see every game we play, we had to do something and we had to make a change and I'm sure you know, if it wouldn't have worked, at least we said we tried. I'd hate to look back and say, well, we should have done this or that. Or we, you, know, you know, but but what I appreciate is the way all of the, the, the pitchers and the players have accepted it and said, yeah, we, we need to try this. And we tried it. It worked. We did it again. It worked. Flipped another guy in there. And uh, we started winning again. Christine? Coach Christine along the Southwest Times record. I just wondered, we've talked a lot about how you faced Stanford before, um, but I just am curious how different you feel like this team is from how it was in February when you faced Stanford. Well, first off, Stanford's really good. Very, very physical. Coach Esker does a great job. I have so much respect for him. Um, you know, when, when we played them in February, they were better than us. They proved it on the field. They shut us out five to nothing. It was about 35 degrees. It was brutal. And that was their second game of the day, and that was our first. So, you know, they I thought they, they outplayed us, they out-toughed us. And, you know, how, how are we a different team? Well, we've got a bunch of games under our belt. We've made a lot of changes. We feel like we're, we're a better team than we were in February. Um, I feel like we're a better team than we were in April. So, uh, I don't know. You know, we're throwing more strikes now. We seem to be putting together better at-bats being a little bit tougher outs. Uh, I would have to say that defense has been solid all year. So that's, uh, you put those, you know, throw strikes, field the ball, good at bats, you got a chance to win. Okay, this, this will be our last question here. The scouting you've done on Alex Williams, what can you say about his repertoire, what you expect from him? And then Connor, what, his last two starts have been, you know, different. Yeah, um, Williams, he's, man, he can just pitch. And uh, he's not going to blow you away, but he's got a really good off-speed stuff, really good change-up. Um, I'm sure his team loves playing behind him, fills up the zone. And you go, you win nine games for a guy against one loss, that's a lot of decisions. They play in a great league with great players. A lot of times you don't have that many decisions. You come out of the game, it's tied, or maybe it's whatever the case may be. Um, as far as Connor, I mean, I, I just feel like that he got, he got a little tired. He, he got a second wind. And, Hopefully the wind keeps blowing. I mean, the guy's pitching good. We, you know, but if he gives us five, that's great. Seven. If he gives us three, we'll go to the pen. But we wouldn't be up here with 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 that Connor in the year that he's had. Dave, thank you. All righty. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs>